Good evening. The Lord be with you. It's good to have uh, more and more of our snowbirds back. Welcome and uh, glad you're safely home. Um, home is a theme that will be picked up uh, this evening in our uh, service as uh, Jesus from the cross provides a home uh, for his mother um, and his son to take care of her and, uh, and a mother for John as well. Our conversation tonight will be between Mary and John uh, taking place uh, later that Good Friday. Our opening hymn tonight is hymn 453, Upon the Cross Extended.
229. Please rise. O oh Lord, open my lips.
found on page 1152 in your few Bibles uh, from St. John in the 19th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing, by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch, and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, and they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, They will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, her early, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. We follow the responsory on page 230. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O oh Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation.
Corinthians 13. Love. The love that we celebrate in this season of Lent, of course, is our Lord's love for us. Love which led him, as St. Paul said, so aptly to bear and believe and hope and endure for us. But does our Lord intend his love to end there once it has reached us? Is it not the nature of love that it is to be shared? Our Lord indicated as much from the cross, even as he was dying for the sins of the whole world, when, when out of the whole world he looked in love on his mother and on his closest disciple and gave them to one another in love, his love to be shared between them, to care for each other, to console each other, to support each other. We read that in response to that love, from that hour, John took Mary to his own home. What do you suppose they said to one another in that hour that followed? And the hour after that? Scripture does not choose to tell us what we might have overheard in those early moments of their dream. But we do have our own moments of grief from which we can surmise. Of this at least we can be sure because like John and Mary, we have come to know the Lord. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yeah. 
you have any idea what it was like to have been that close to him? Of course you do. What am I saying? My son. My baby. My firstborn. I suppose everyone thinks her child is the most special of all. But he really was. Somehow I felt I could always rely on him, and that he wouldn't ever let me down. You remember that day I went up to him and said, he had no lines? Yes, I remember. In my way, I guess I was impulsive too. I don't know what I expected in that day at the wedding. Certainly not what happened. I'm not sure I can believe what did happen, even yet. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It made a believer out of me, out of all of us. I know that when I first met him there at the seaside at by my dad's boat, I knew I wanted to follow him. I'm not sure I knew why at the time. There was life in him, like the light shining in the darkness. It was so, it was so good to be with him, to be together like that. John, do you remember what happened after the wedding? No. Well, yes. We all went home, didn't we? Yes. We all went home together to Capernaum. We were almost like a family already, even then. So close, so happy, so expected. Yes, we were almost like a family, weren't we? There was a love there that drew us to one another, and he was the source of it. John, did you really know how much he loved you? All of you? He would have done anything for you. Did you know that, John? Yes, I knew it. We all knew it. Last night, in fact, at supper, we saw it again, in a way I'll never forget. It was when we had just gotten together. There was a kind of awkward pause before things began, and then we washed our feet. I wouldn't doubt it. He washed our feet, and he said that by that act, we were to learn a lesson.
so different from all other knives. Why is this knife so different from all other knives? This is the knife when God acted to save his people from their bondage. The knife when the angel of death passed over the homes of those whose doors were spread with the blood of the Lamb. The night of the death of the firstborn son. How anxious I have been to celebrate this Passover with you, he said last night. Last night. Was it really only last night? It seems as if an eternity has gone by since then, as if the whole world were moving in a different direction. John, will you please say the prayer? The prayer? The table blessing. You know, the man of the house says the prayer so that the observer can meet again. Mary, are you sure you want to go through with this? Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. How long ago I said that, not really knowing what it would mean to me then, or now. John, please, the prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. For you, for you, oh Mary, I can't. Please, my son, he would have wanted it that way. For you bring forth from the earth. For you bring forth from the earth. At that moment, of course, Mary and John would have had no way of knowing how quickly that prayer would be answered in our Lord's resurrection. How he would literally be brought forth from the earth as God's Old Testament people had been praying for centuries. The sorrow of Mary and John returned to joy as Jesus had promised. Their faith would turn to fruition. Their hope would be fulfilled with the dawning of Easter. Three days hence. In the midst of their own sorrows, whatever they may be, we share that, Mary and John, the faith and the hope to look forward, even beyond the tragedy of death, to be united again in love. Love. Two words we want to look at tonight. The first word is love. In love. That word that goes with faith and hope. Faith, hope, and love abide these three. The grace is love. In the case of Mary and John, it was love that gave substance to their faith and to their hope. The Savior's dying love, wide enough to include all the world, yet specific enough to focus on each of them, Mary and John, in their own needs and grief. And the Lord's prescription for those needs was love. His love for them that would flow to each other as they cared for each other. It was a love that shared the faith and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ, we have been given to one another. If you were the one who was standing there at the cross. If you were the one who knew his great love there, to whom do you suppose would he give you? Who has he given you to love and to look after? And who has he given to love and to look after you? Who is in your life to care for? That his love might flow to you and flow to those around. And above all, know this. That in the cross, there is love. In the cross, know that you are love. Why is this night so different? This is the night when God acted to 
save his people from their bondage. This is the night of the death of the firstborn. This is the night the Passover lamb is slain. Three days. Three days until they will know that Jesus is safe. And that's the other word. Safe. Three days until Jesus is safe. Until they know that. Until victory. They know he is alive. That he is the Messiah. That he is God. That he is Savior. Three days until their sorrow turns to joy. But already on this night, everything is taken care of. Even though they don't know it. Even though they are filled with grief, they are safe. Because Jesus is safe. And because Jesus is safe, they are not only saved, but they are saved. They are loved. Why is this night so different? Because this is the night, the first night, when Satan has been conquered, when sins have been paid for, when the promise is fulfilled. The victory has been won on the cross. That act, it's an act of love. God's love for you. And it's an act that makes you safe. Safe now. And safe for eternity. For you are in the love, in the care, and in the protection of your God. As our Lord looked down and took care of Mary and John. So he looked down to take care of you that you might know his love and that you might be safe for all eternity. And that, my friends, is the way that it is in the year of our Lord, 2014. In Jesus' name, Amen.
my prayer.
Special thanks to Kelly for the solo, for for all the music tonight. We appreciate that. Um, thanks to all those who have served our Lenten uh, lunches. This was the last one tonight, and uh, the last of our Wednesday services. Uh, next week is Holy Week, uh, beginning Palm Sunday, uh, continuing all through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, um, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Uh, the schedule of services is uh, there for you. If you'd like to uh, have a check out the used book sale on um, this last couple days of it, um, I think it's going down maybe on Friday. And um, also, if you want to order flowers for Easter, tomorrow's the deadline for that. There's a basket uh, with order sheets uh, on the, the counter. Also, if you'd like to provide food for the Easter breakfast, there's a sign-up sheet to, to donate food there as well. Pray the Lord uh, has blessed you throughout this Lenten season as we've overheard these uh, conversations from the cross and pray that he will uh, bless you also in this coming holy week.